Hello, and welcome to tonight's homework help for Monday night, November 5th, 2012. We're going to jump right in with um, variables on both sides. Okay, so this is essentially an extension of what we've been doing with uh, multi-step equations. Now we're going to end up having variables on both sides. The instructions say solve the following. So solve means we're going to find an answer for our variables. Okay, uh, and um, it says show your work. So we need to show the proof. You need to show e each step that you do and check your answers. To get full credit, you need to show us your answer check, okay? I went over this in class. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do uh, this. Um, let's do this bottom right problem. It's probably the hardest problem on here, so I figure might as well just do the hardest one. Okay, so here we have 8n plus 10. Uh, equals 5n plus 16. So I am going to look at both sides. There's both sides have variables n. So I'm just going to take away the ver the number of variables from the side that has the least amount. So 8n is greater than 5n. So I'm going to take away 5n from bo both sides to make my life easier. So I'm going to take away 5n here or subtract 5n from that side. And I'm going to subtract uh, 5n from this side. Notice I write it below the other set of variables. Um, this uh, <clears throat> 5n minus 5n is just going to be 0. So that ends up uh, being added to 16. So that's just equal to 16. Okay. On the left side, we have 8n minus 5n leaves me with 3n's uh, plus 10. So I have to remember to bring that plus 10 down. Uh, now, uh, what I do is I now have a two-step equation here. Uh, and this two-step equation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first uh, get rid of the 10 on this side. So if I subtract 10 on that side, I have to subtract 10 from this side as well. Um, I get 3n plus 10 minus 10 means that the 10s go to 0. So I'm left with just 3n on this side equals 16 minus 10. Well, 16 minus 10 is 6. I'm not quite done yet. Um, I still have my variable. It's still not alone. Um, so I'm now going to divide both sides by 3. Uh, if I divide both sides by 3 to get rid of that variable on top, 3 divided by 3 is 1. 1 times n is n. That leaves me with the plain old n on the left side. On the right side, 6 divided by 3 is 2, and I've gotten my answer. Now I want to check my work. So I'm going to recopy my problem exactly the way it was, 8n plus 10. And instead of putting an equal sign, I'm going to put an equal sign with a question mark over it, which lets me know that I'm not, I'm not claiming that they're equal. I'm trying to figure out if they are indeed equal or not. Okay, so um, now I'm going to substitute for n in this problem uh, the value that I got. So I'm going to place wherever I have an n, I'm going to make that a 2. So it's 8 times 2 plus 10. And we're going to see, does that indeed equal 5 times 2 plus 16? Okay, well, 8 times 2 is 16 plus 10 on the left side. And again, does that equal? We don't know yet. So we just put a question mark over our equal sign. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 16. Well, 16 plus 10 is 26. And 10 plus 16 is 26. Does 26 equal 26? It indeed does. So that proves that, uh, or that's our check, and that shows that the answer is correct, that... Using a value of 2 for n means that our answer is correct. Okay. The other uh, three problems on the side are very similar and probably a little easier, so you should be able to do it. Don't Remember, do your work, show your proof, show your work, and check your answer. Okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to the other side in just a moment. Okay, here we are on the other side. We have staircase problem, and you can see a staircase right here. Uh, it says, look at the staircase. There are five steps. Each step is six inches high, so going up is six inches. How high is the staircase from top to bottom? So you have to consider how high each step is and add them together, and it says how many steps there are. Okay, uh, and then you have to explain. So you have to explain how you figured that out, okay, or you can show it using math. Okay, number two says... Let's see here. Number two says each step is 12 inches from front to back. So the top part of each step is 12 inches. It says a snail crawls from the bottom of the top staircase. So a snail crawls from the very bottom, goes up 6 inches, then over 12 inches, 
to do one whole step. Then it does the same thing for the next step and the same thing for the next step. How far does it travel? So you have to write that distance in inches and then show or explain how you figured it out here. Okay, uh, if you have any further questions or unsure of anything, please feel free to give either Mr. Slepper or myself a call with their information down below. Uh, good night, good luck, and go Bears! Rawr!